Hey guys and gals, Rody with Groovy Cycle Works here, and today we're going to talk a little bit about welding titanium. Titanium as a material for bicycle frames is an excellent choice because it offers the greatest strength to weight ratio of all of the materials we can utilize, as well as having the highest cyclic fatigue resistance. However, working with titanium does present its own issues. The most interesting issue is the fact that when heated, titanium has a strong affinity for contaminants. When the well pool is hot, it likes to draw in oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, and carbon into the weldment. As it cools, if these contaminants are present, it causes embrittlement in that weldment and can lead to potential failure down the road. That's a big no-no for bicycle frames. So we need to learn how can we control the potential oxidation within the weldment and provide a good, solid, clean joint. Well, there's three ways that we work on protecting our weld zone from contaminants with titanium. The first is to make sure that we have an exquisitely clean surface to work with. Titanium forms a natural oxide layer over the substrate at normal temperatures called titanium dioxide. This layer is what gives titanium its corrosion resistance. However, titanium dioxide takes more heat to melt than does the base material. So we need to mechanically remove that first. And we can do that through a number of methods. We can use an abrasive cloth, we can use scotch brite pads, or we can use a stainless steel brush that's dedicated only to titanium use. After we mechanically break down that oxide layer and get down to a nice clean surface to work with, our next option for controlling the purity of our weld zone is through heat control. We do that in two ways. We use heat sinks to help collect the overrun of heat moving through the product so that our heat stays focused only in our weld zone. And we also do it through the settings on our welder. By using pulse settings, it allows us to have a high cycle rate of energy going in and out of the material, therefore helping to reduce buildup. Why is that important, you ask? Well, here's why. Titanium <coughs> likes to be oxygen-free to prevent contaminants until it gets around uh, 800 degrees Fahrenheit or so within the, within the heat-affected zone. So it's important for us to kind of limit that heat buildup and then to ensure that we have good coverage of a shielding gas until it cools below that magic temperature. So the third way that we control the purity of our weld is through our shielding gas. We use argon to purge both inside the tubes as well as to bathe the outside of the weld zone through our torch. We have a couple different options on what we can use to help get that argon bathed over our weld zone. And that's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to focus on creating a custom cup for your weld torch that's going to allow a greater diameter so that you can have, number one, more shielding gas spread across the surface of your weld, Number two, less interruption in the gas flow. And number three, allow you to extend your tungsten out farther for those difficult areas like underneath the seat stay, seat tube connections. So let's take a look and I'll show you what some of our options are and then what we're going to do to create a custom cup that's going to take care of you for the rest of your tie welding career. On the table before us, we see some different options for cup and gas lens sizes for welding titanium. We stated that it's very important to ensure that we have good gas coverage not only internally within the frame that we're working on, but also externally to bathe the weld zone in argon until it comes below that 800 degree Fahrenheit mark. So let's take a look at some of the cups that have been utilized to help us perform a good clean weld. The first cup is a standard number 7 ceramic cup. It utilizes a gas lens which allows the argon to flow through it, diffusing out so it comes down in a nice even pattern on our weld zone. The disadvantage to a cup of this size is that it has a very small diameter discharge. So we can't extend very far in our weld puddle before we outrun the coverage our gas provides. This cup would most typically be utilized for steel or aluminum use or very short or small titanium tack welds. The next size cup we go to is a standard number 12 cup. You can see that it utilizes a gas lens inside with a diffusion screen 
as well as has a larger diameter output than what our previous cup did. Uh, this is a very common size used by people who weld titanium and it allows you to get about a good inch or inch and a quarter or so of a weld bead before you need to stop due to excessive heat buildup and before you outrun the cooling potential of the material. The third cup we're going to look at is actually a titanium specific cup. This is a champagne cup made by Weldtech. You can see that it has the largest diameter of all the cups thus far. It uses a dual screen as well as a gas lens internally to help spread out that argon in a nice even flow. The disadvantage of this particular cup, however, is you can see that there's a very short distance between the screen and the edge of the ceramic. So it makes this cup a little more subjective to uh, wind movement and or swirling of the argon layer before it reaches the level of our substrate that we're welding on. What we're going to teach you to make today, however, is a special cup that's custom made of standard parts. This is our custom cup that we're going to teach you how to make today. It uses a standard number 12 ceramic cup with a gas lens diffusion screen, but as you can see, we've modified it so that the gas lens now occupies the smaller diameter of the top, which was our previous output hole, and now uses the larger diameter of the cup for our discharge. The important thing about this orientation is that it allows us a much greater depth to our argon before it exits the cup. So it solves some of the issue that the champagne cup has with an erratic or cyclic flow of gas before it reaches the base metal that we're working on. This design allows us to have a nice volume of argon build up, it's protected well within the cup, and allows us, number two, to extend our electrode out much, much farther due to this design so that we can have contaminant-free welds in very tight notch areas uh, such as the seat say to seat tube or in tight between the down tube and the head tube. Let's take a look at some of the materials that are utilized to create this cup uh, and I think you're going to find it uh, a lot easier than you think but it's going to offer a world of benefit. These are the materials that are required to make our custom cup. Uh, these are all available from your local welding supply company and or you can pick up uh, the acetone and JB Weld at your local hardware store as well. Let's start off. Uh, we start off with our standard number 12 ceramic cup. Uh, it usually costs you around uh, four bucks, five bucks, something like that at the local welding supply. You also need to pick up a gas lens. This one's made by Weldcraft. It is the 45V64S gas lens with a stubby connection. Uh, this particular one is for 332nd because that's the electrode of choice that I like to use. We also need some JB Weld, an acid brush, a couple Q-tips, some acetone, and then you need to make up <clears throat> one of these little guys. Uh, what this is is a custom uh, fitment that I made that allows us to pull up and fixture the gas lens tight inside the cup while we wait for it to cure. Uh, you can see that it's just a standard piece of 6061 aluminum. I've drilled and tapped it for a 5 24 TPI thread, uh, which is consistent with the interior of my Weldcraft torch. I've also <clears throat> designed it so that it sits down inside of our ceramic cup but still leaves room for the stubby connection to come up without having an interference fit uh, with, the, with the glue once we get to that point. So our first step is actually to take our gas lens, go over to the lathe, and we're going to turn the threads down off of our gas lens to reduce its OD and then chamfer the edge so it has a nice rounded position so that it will fit easily inside of our cup and nice and tight to the dome shape of the smaller end. Once we have that put together, we go ahead and take some JB Weld. We'll mix up the JB Weld, apply it around the edge of our gas lens. 
slide it inside our cup, and then we're going to attach our custom fixture to hold everything in place. All right, once our holding fixture is in place, we simply need to let the cup sit for six to eight hours for the JB Weld to set up, and then what we'll have is our finished product. We'll have a nice cup welded in place with a gas lens, diffusion screen, good depth to allow our argon to pool and flow down evenly, and a deep enough cup with good enough gas coverage that we're able to get uh, good extension on our electrode far beyond what we normally could achieve with any of the three previous cups that were displayed. We're going to run you through a slideshow real quick and show you the steps involved in making this. So hopefully you too can make a cup similar to this that's going to provide contaminant free welding for your tie experience. And let's just give you an example here of how far you can extend this tungsten without having contamination. We're going to position it here above our piece. We're going to give it a little bit of pre-flow. Let the argon flow in the hit. And as you can see, even with the tungsten extended almost an inch and a half, very little discoloration on this rounded piece of TI. So there you have it folks. An easy way to make a custom cup for titanium welding that provides good extension of your electrode, excellent gas coverage, and will provide you with a crystal clean, strong titanium weldment. Until next time, have a good time building frames.